What is up everybody? Welcome to my channel. Thanks for clicking. In this video, we're gonna be switching out this deadbolt right here. This is an old school manual deadbolt and we're gonna be switching it out for this smart lock deadbolt you can see here. It boasts key free, app control, anti-theft alert, auto lock, battery backup, and touch screen keypad. We're renting our house out on Airbnb and we want to be able to reset the code automatically remotely from afar. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, so let's open it up here. Here it is, brand new out of the box. Ordered online, I'll put links down below for this lock and similar locks that make the cut in terms of recommended uh, price and value. I thoroughly vet all of my purchases and recommendations to meet those two criteria, saving you time and money if you're interested in checking that out. So here it is, brand new. Here is the, uh, everything's packaged pretty well in this like um, styrofoam, squishy plastic styrofoam-like material. So that's nice. There's no, you know, scratches or anything like that. And we've got the two, the keypad piece and the back locking piece, and then a variety of accessories, including uh, screws and uh, the deadbolt install. They even give you a screwdriver, which is nice. And there's the deadbolt itself and the mounting plate, which we'll explain later in the video, obviously, as we get this thing hooked up, installed, and reviewed to make sure all this uh, meat makes the makes the cut and then an actual drill bit too because we're going to be maybe drilling a hole through the door and then this critical piece if you're planning on remotely unlocking it's called the g2 gateway you need this as well otherwise you will be confined to just bluetooth proximity and wireless connection instead of being halfway across the world so if you want remote access uh, you'll need to buy that little piece as well so here it is laid out everything looking pretty nice pretty new and I'm happy with the quality so far. Uh, let's take a quick break. Welcome to the channel. Do lots of home projects around the house, saving you time and money. Click that subscribe button. Like this video if it's gonna help you out or is helping you out and share this with somebody. And by the way, if you're interested in turning your hobbies and skills, I know you've got them into cash, just like I'm doing on this channel. I'm gonna teach you how you can build your own YouTube channel, just like I did. I'm gonna put a link in the description below for my free course and the master course. Definitely recommend you check that out. All right, back to business here. We've got everything laid out, organized, all the plastic off, and we're gonna get this thing hooked up so that it works properly step by step. So let's go ahead and begin that. All right, so let's take a look at the door. We've got the handle unit itself. We're gonna keep that on even though it's a little, I think the weather, the heat is doing that. When the sun shines in the morning, it really heats this up and I think it's starting to scratch that away. But anyway, uh, we're gonna keep this handle unit here and we're just gonna be replacing the deadbolt with the smart deadbolt, like I said. So here's what the outside looks like for context. And there's the deadbolt itself with the strike plate and the two screws and the latch for the deadbolt, just like that. So first things first, uh, we're gonna take out the existing deadbolt. There are two screws right here. Nothing on the outside, obviously. You don't want that to be accessible. Uh, so we're gonna have to switch that up like that and we'll get a really long screwdriver, not really long, but a skinny one that gives enough clearance right here so that it doesn't actually hit that. So that's pretty simple. Here's what the two screws look like. Notice I'm pinching it like this because I don't want anything to fall down and crack the tile. And we'll just slide that out, give you a better view here. So this might be interesting to you to see how things were put together before, before you start taking it apart. I like to take a picture of it. That's not ready to come out yet. So we'll put this carefully on the ground. And then the next part, this, I'm just pressing with my thumb right here. That should pop out the deadbolt piece on this end. Can you see that? Just like that. And then this piece should, that looks like they put some caulking around there or something or some adhesive should come out just like that. 
And then you're left with the deadbolt like that. Oh, a little bit of grease, darn it. So we're gonna next take out the deadbolt. Okay, and I do recommend, see that? A magnetic tip, just in general, because it's nice to have so it doesn't fall out. It'll actually catch the screw. Oops, don't make that mistake, wrong one. Make sure it's the dead bolt. There we go. See that? The screw just kind of stays, and if it falls, it's pretty nice. All right, so we've got that done. Let's kind of wiggle it out now. The old one-handed operation. And you can see the anatomy of this. We're just sliding this out. Look at that. How easy is that? Not too bad, right? So here is the existing ill deadbolt. We no longer need that. We can run that to the to restore or something where somebody else could use that because it's in pretty good shape or we can hold on to it in case we're not really happy with the new unit and we want to revert back eventually to a manual. So we'll kind of hang on to that for now. And here is what we're dealing with. I've got the large cutout there and then the deadbolt hole as well. Now, before we move on to the next step, I'm gonna take the old, this is the old one again, okay? And it's facing up. Uh, I just wanna get a measurement. In fact, you can do this before you remove that from the, basically the center of the circle to this part right here. This is back set. And that's an important measurement. We're about two and seven eighths, something like that. In other words, this is the longer setting. The deadbolt will come, it's able to be extended if you kind of turn it, push it in, and then turn it back. Uh, this is, some doors have kind of a smaller, a less long um, back set. This one was, let me pull that, extend it, and pull it back. This one was set to be centered on this door. So the back set's actually a little longer. So we're gonna have to take that into account with the new deadbolt as well, which let me grab. I have that right here. This is the new deadbolt piece. And let's make sure it's pointed up. There should be something that says up. Can you see that? So you just wanna make sure that's pointed up. And we'll slide the new deadbolt in. And you, just as I expected, look, this is set for the short setting. So we need to actually extend that. So we're gonna turn it, pull it out and turn it back. There we go. And I think that, there we go. That's much better. That is centered in the correct position. So again, you twist, push and twist. Or to extend it, you pull, extend and twist, or twist, extend, twist, if that makes sense. You can play around with it, have a paper towel on hand to wipe off any grease that might be on the deadbolt unit. Now, something else I wanna show you when you put the new deadbolt in, the strike plate might not seat properly as it did before. You can see we've got some corners. However, that is flush and it might be okay as long as we have enough clearance right there. Yeah, I think we're gonna be fine. So we don't have to drill out any, any of those corners if we don't want to. We can just press it or just put the screws right in directly like that. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do that. And I lied actually, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and trim out the wood just a little bit. So I'm just tracing with a pencil, just a little bit for that cutout. So there are my pencil marks. We're gonna get the t a tool out and uh, basically grind that down a little bit. And my tool of choice will be this Dremel rotary tool. They're super cheap, 20 bucks or so for a cheap one online. Or obviously you can go nuts and get a, a really nice one, but. We're going to drill this out just a little bit. 
with my cutoff wheel. And it does spit out some sawdust, so wear a mask. And you can use a flathead screwdriver to chisel out the rest. Talk about something that nobody will ever see unless they're switching out the dead bolt again and saying, hey, look what this idiot did. But I doubt that. And hey, it works at the end of the day. If it works, then should be legit, right? All right, there we go. Let's take a look. Got the new deadbolt here. Got things pretty much, pretty much cut out. Let's wiggle that in. What do you think? That looks pretty good. That is flush. Look at that, it doesn't stick out. It rests firmly on the back side of that wood so there's no gaps in between creating any pivots or any bot the bottom's not sticking out so we should be good and notice that i finished that off hand tightened as opposed to the drill just for a little extra torque i don't want to strip anything out either so all right so that deadbolt is installed and actually i just realized i've been calling that the strike plate i think that's not the strike plate that's just the deadbolt plate the strike plate is over here right here and guess what good news we already have one installed so we don't have to switch this one out however i will note that i did put in several years ago i switched out the screws holding this in place uh, they come with little you know flimsy short screws uh, so i i put in pretty long like two and a half or three inch uh, deck screws right here and I'll put links down below in the description for all the supplies that you see in this video and if I forget, forget anything just let me know comment below and I'll make sure I get those links put up but um, that should add a little more beefed up security and long story short we don't have to do anything with this this should be good to go as long as the deadbolt aligns and lines up and goes perfectly into there we don't have to adjust it so the next step, the instructions actually have you start off before you do this by drilling a small hole in your door. Uh, this basically provides more security for the locking mechanism uh, so that because it's it's a little taller, right? So I think the idea is that if you take it and push it, um, we don't want that, right? We want it to stay in place. So the manufacturer has you drill a hole right through your door. I'm not a big fan of that. We're going to actually skip that part for the time being because uh, if everything works and I'm happy with the installation of this lock without drilling a hole in my door, this would be preferable. Um, but if you are curious and want to do this technically the right way, because I'm no pro, they do come with instruction or templates right here. You can see this one is the one that will fit for my door and you flip it over oops this way and line it up the front edge of the door with the hole and then you drill right there basically so they want you to take this little front set screw here and screw it in like this and that is what the little hole is for can you see that so that it goes through there but it appears that this is optional we're gonna unscrew it. We're gonna throw that down. We might come back to it later, but what we're gonna do next is take out the little wife, whatever this is called, the cord, the electrical cord. It's got a little adapter clip on the end of it. And we wanna make sure that this piece is horizontal. Let me give you a better view here. Can you see that? We want this to be horizontal, this metal, long metal piece right here, okay? We also want the deadbolt to be unlocked, not locked, so not extended basically, so just like that. And this is the keypad, so this is gonna go on the outside of the door, 
and we're gonna tuck the wire underneath the deadbolt like that. And then we're gonna put the flat part, the long flat part piece of metal through the center screw. So again, a white electric cord underneath the deadbolt and then this long piece needs to go right through there. Can you see that? And we'll push that all the way in like that. There we go. And let's take a look at the other side. This is what we're at, what we're looking at here. So there's that long piece that went right through there and then the white cord underneath the deadbolt. You with me so far? Not too bad, right? All right. So go ahead and spin that up. Make sure that that deadbolt rotates freely and easily. That's nice and smooth, so I'm happy with that. Now, we're going to take the mounting plate next, which is this cool little piece, and we're going to bring that wire over this way. We're going to see these long two things. They need to go right right in there. And then we're going to take the wire. The wire has to come up through this little notch like that. Can you see that? And then two hands here, we're going to press on the outside of the door and make sure that's nice and secure. And then here, that looks good. So there are two little screws, flat tipped, and then a longer one. The longer one goes right here, but we don't have an actual hole, if you remember, for that. So we're going to bypass that, and we're going to use the two shorter ones to go right through here. And a couple of things, I had to convert to the two, I had to use two long screws because the shorter ones provided right down there did not have enough length to get to the receiving end, which is through the deadbolt apparently. So we're gonna tighten that up. And as you tighten these up, you wanna make sure your keypad here is good, right? That it's straight, that this isn't kinked, the little rubber weather lining. And so that looks good. We can proceed. And notice I'm using the screwdriver to hand tighten that. And I'm going to make that pretty snug without stripping things out. So next we've got this piece. This is the internal piece that's going to mount right here. And that will allow you to manually control the deadbolt. But essentially what we're going to do here, this is a left handed door. In other words, I'm on the inside and I'm looking this way. And, but if we kind of turned around, you know, this way, it would open inward like this, right? With the hinges on the left and the door handle on the right. Okay. So we're going to, according to that logic, we're going to take a look at this piece and bend it, bend this little weather stripping back just a little bit. And there's a switch. Right here, can you see that? L and R. Again, L and R. I'm gonna, it toggles this way or this way. We're gonna make sure it's on L and proceed to this next piece here, getting that installed. All right, and then we'll flip it over and it clearly says slide up. This is the battery compartment. We'll get All right, next we're gonna install this little guy. Now, upon closer inspection, you can actually see, let me put this down, there are, very hard to see, but there are two little rivets on this side, and they're smooth on this side. Additionally, if you look at the side piece, there's two pieces of plastic, and there's a little more space on the underside. Can you see that on the side of that? A little more space than on the top side of that piece of plastic. Okay, now if we look at this piece, this is where it's going to go into the connecting 
the connector here and look at those little grooves on the side of the yellow right in the center of the screen there's a little more it's a lot of focus sorry a little more space on that front side and there's also on the front of the connector piece there's two little grooves it's kind of hard to see let me get it connected and i'll show you how that works we're basically gonna i'm gonna put the camera down and we're gonna plug it in just like that all right so this is the angle that i was working with here i want to make sure that goes don't have your weather stripping up that would be no good it's got to come through like that and then it sits just like this so it took a little bit of adjusting to find the right angle and then you don't want to push down on the wires but I'm using my fingernails here to just kind of grab the top part right there to make sure that's seated all the way. That looks pretty secure. You can see the little white edges here sink into the little grooves on both sides. So I'm happy with that. And because this is a left door, like I talked about earlier, we need to make sure that that deadbolt thing right here, the lever, is horizontal. Right-hand doors need to be vertical according to the instructions. So next we're going to slide this piece in just like that and it's got to go through that center screw. There we go. And the cord is probably going to sit back there a little bit. All right, so I've got it pinched and we're gonna put two screws, one right there and one right there. All right, got those set screws in and we're gonna put one there also. All right, well, sometimes there's a good reason that something's in the instructions and sometimes there's a bad reason. This may be a good reason. Earlier in the video I talked about bypassing drilling a hole in the in the door at the top if you remember that. Um, and the reason is because can you see that gap at the top? Well if we don't have a screw here going through the door connecting to this piece then the, bra the bracket the mounting bracket here basically gets kind of sucked this way. Can you see that? Kind of goes like this uh, because these two screws here are super tight and that creates uh, a bit of a gap here on the top piece. And the problem with that then is when you go to set this thing up, it doesn't seal all the way around. There's a gap on the top part. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna drill a hole in this so let's get our template out here and we'll get that lined up and the hole marked. And we'll get the old drill out here. And the thing about this, we're gonna start from the interior on that side and we're gonna gently poke it through until it, the tip of the drill bit proceeds on the outside because we don't wanna push it all the way through and potentially damage the outside of the door. So I'll show you what I mean here in a second. I'm also making sure my drill bit's super level uh, there's a built-in level on my drill bit. Then I'm going to come around to the front of the door and finish it off that way. Nice and clean. All right. <clears throat> no turning back now. Got a nice hole all the way through. Hopefully I measured that right. We'll see. All right. So I've got that front screw piece on, and it should now just go right through like that. All right, let me get back to where I was then. All right, and now we're gonna put that top screw in. That's what we were missing before, if you remember. And that's gonna go through the door and connect, I can feel it biting right now to that other side and it's gonna suck the top part of this bracket against the door and that 
is what I want. Uh, yeah, that's nice and tight and even. All right, so the instruction manual knew what it was talking about. We'll get the pin hooked up here again. Nothing like doing this twice to really build your skill set, right? Look on the bright side. Now we've got the plate installed. We're gonna take the two small screws and there's little spots right where the battery compartment is and then a longer screw for the bottom. And that's gonna attach this stainless steel plate to the mounting bracket on the underside, making it nice and firm. Now you wanna make sure that nothing gets pinched like that cord or your weather stripping is pinched. It should be nice and uniform all the way around. All right, well the kids are back in. They've been playing outside. But at this point, you can test out the manual lock and we can close the door to make sure that that is good. Let me make sure the camera is up for you. Oh, we are close. We've got some issue. All right, there is always an issue, but take a look when I turn this, the deadbolt is hitting the bottom of the strike plate. Remember we use the existing strike plate. So I'm gonna have to chisel or drill out this bottom part a little bit. So let's get out my trusty Dremel tool and I've got a metal cutoff wheel and also a sander that I'll be using to knock that back out a little bit. All right, so I've got that backed out a little bit, grind it off on the bottom and the side. And I think it looks aesthetically not too bad. Got a little clip right there, but let's close it and see. So that's the close. Nice and smooth, look at that. Okay, so we can go ahead and put some batteries in at this point. Dad, we've got, did you make a code? Just a minute, bud. We've got four, whoops. All right, we'll put the cap on. We're gonna head on over to the app and link this thing up with our phone. Now the name of the app is TT Lock. It's not exactly gonna blow your socks off, but it totally gets the job done as you'll see. We're gonna open the app, create an account and click the plus button. We're gonna add a door lock and then it says to touch any keypad or any key on your keypad to get started. Do that and it will basically activate. Make sure you have batteries in it. You're gonna give it a name and then select the proper door alignment. In this case, we have a left swinging door like I mentioned before. And boom, it's connected. Let's test it out real quick. And boom, I just successfully locked my device using my Bluetooth. Now, what if you're not close to the device and you are remotely, you know, like in another country, another state or whatever, we're gonna add the gateway device. There's a left menu option called gateway and we're gonna select G2 for this particular unit, just like this and you follow the on-screen instructions, it's pretty simple. Let's get out the actual device. This is what it looks like. It comes packaged with the door unit. Now, why they can't build this technology into the door itself, I don't know, but it requires this separate powered unit. And basically this is like a Wi-Fi extender. It will receive the Wi-Fi from your home and communicate that successfully, that signal successfully to the door. And here is what it looks like for the time being. I'll show you a better place where I put that later. You'll want to do this part relatively quickly. Don't go grab, grab a drink or anything. You've got about 60 seconds to do this uh, from the time that you plug it in. Otherwise, you'll have to unplug it and start over. But you follow the on-screen instructions just like that, and it should find your lock, thus giving you remote capabilities. Let's turn off Bluetooth, and I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi and just re re rely on cellular signal to do this. We're going to test it out. Now, before you do that, you have to go into your settings in the app, and turn on remote unlock. It's a feature in the menu. It's pretty easy to find. You do have to be Bluetooth enabled to turn that on. And then once you're turned on, you can Bluetooth disable and virtually be remotely from this point forward. But it does require you to be physically present to turn on the remote initially. So let's go ahead and test that out. You'll notice there's a small circle. See the big lock in the middle of your screen? Right next to it is a small little circle that appeared. That will be your remote control or for remote capabilities, not Bluetooth and not Wi-Fi, if that makes sense. And that worked successfully.
Now the gateway I initially had plugged in because they say it's supposed to be fairly close to the lock in the instructions, but I actually put it way over here near our internet. You can see over here we've got it plugged in next to the router and the modem, which is a lot farther than the recommended distance. They say 16 feet, I think, and this is uh, more than 16 feet. 16 feet is probably about right here. So I would say that's about 20 feet uh, total, maybe even a little more, and it doesn't seem to affect the operability of uh, remote locking and unlocking, which is nice. All right, let's tear this away. Now the keyhole is under here. There's a little circle right there for your pin. All right, we're gonna pop this off. There we go. So there's just two holes. I think you can use either side. There's these little pins and that basically allows you to access the key. So if you need to manually override this, there's several keys that it comes with. Let's test them out and make sure that it works. Oh yeah, easy, easy. And then we'll pick this random one as well. Oh yeah. And we're gonna assume the rest of them work, but that's how you do it. And then we can put this back if we don't want to access the keyhole, just like that. Now, as far as key code goes, you're gonna go to the settings and click basics, and that will allow you to input the uh, admin passcode. This is a permanent passcode that the owner, or the, so basically me, I installed this and owned it according to the account that I set up. This is my passcode, and I'm gonna share that passcode with relevant family members if they need it. I can also issue one-time passcodes, which is nice. We just set the master, the administrative passcode. So I'm gonna turn the camera away put it in and see if that unlocks it. You'll be pressing the pound key and then your code and then ending with the pound key. Oh yeah, look at that. And then to lock it, we should be able to just hold. There we go. Hold the path or the uh, pound key for a couple of seconds and it automatically locks. That's pretty cool. All right, let's do a real test then. And close it up and we're gonna lock it. And I just set up a test account for uh, somebody who may be arriving and then can use it unlimited times and then is checking out or leaving at the end of a certain period. So I set up a, a PIN, a passcode through the app and we're gonna try it out right now. And I just remembered what that was, so we're gonna do pound, and you should actually hear it blink, or hear it beep, right? Ooh, that's pretty cool. I like it. Very nice. Well, we'll stop the video there. This is a successful buy. Will it hold up over the long term? I think so. It seems to be well made and easy to install, secure, and has the tech to back it up. The app isn't super sexy, but it gets the job done, allowing lots of features, and we're gonna call this a win. Good luck to you. Thanks for being with me today.